come and share once again. Um, and um, speaking from what we shared last time, um, I, I took you through my story um, and also just how you can identify um, that you're in an abusive relationship. And there are some areas you are not able to cover, which is what I will start with today. The first one being around the myths surrounding abuse in relationships. You know, there are so many stories that go around as to why someone stayed in an abusive relationship. For me, the most common one um, that, that I, I, I could pick um, from, from my experience is people thought that sometimes well, women stay in abusive relationships because of money. Um, okay, they, I don't know, maybe there are those who do, um, but like in my case, I was in campus, um, I was doing business, I was selling clothes, I was making some good money um, selling clothes, at least I was able to sustain myself and, and do a few other things. My parents were paying my school fees, so it, it, to me it was not an issue of money really. But often I could get comments such as, um, which is the one thing that normally drives me to work really hard. I could get comments from people like when you've bought something nice, they're like, oh, you were bought for that thing by your boyfriend. And it, it really used to irritate me because I used to think who, who taught our generation of young ladies that whenever someone does something, it has to be someone who did it for them. So that is just one myth um, around why people stay in abusive relationships. People think someone is in it for money. That may not always be the case. And then there's, there's also something um, people commonly say, like when you tell someone what you're going through, someone will tell you it was just a disagreement. It was just this one time. And the message I am preaching is simply, when you see the signs, do not ignore them. You know. When someone, when someone hits you once, do, 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 not allow, do not allow yourself to believe that it was just this one time, it was just a disagreement. And when, when, someone, in, when someone insults you, don't, don't allow people to make you believe that it was just a disagreement. And then um, the, other, the, the, the other myth around abusive relationships is that abusers are from uh, violent backgrounds. You will actually find people who are not necessarily from violent backgrounds. Um, you will also find someone who grew up, um, like grew up in a proper home, but somewhere along the way, they lost the line. And this is where we say that we all need the place of God in our individual lives because it's 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 not it's it's actually a choice, you know. Like it's 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 actually a choice someone makes to be an abuser or to be that kind of a person. And like I had some someone ask me then, well, what happens when someone just wakes up and they they used to love God and then they become someone totally different? And my response to that is the same. We all need to find our way back to God somehow. Um, I, was, I was in a fellowship today, in a work fellowship, and, and the sermon today that was shared was on, we need to understand that when God created us, um, he, created, he created all of us in our own unique ways, and he gave us our own unique abilities. And he gave us his word as a guide. Now, when we have the word of God as a guide, we are all in our different phases in life. So you can't, you can't copy paste what the other person is doing in their life into your life. And that is why we need a daily walk, a daily refreshing with God and ask him at that particular moment, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to deal with this situation? And so that's why you find that whenever we lose the place of God in our lives in one way or the other, or whenever we lose the place of God in our in our marriages, even in our relationships, because I personally look at relationships in so many ways. Um, I am a daughter, I am a sister, I am a friend, and all these are relationships that God has trusted me with. So whenever I lose, um, whenever I lose the guidance from God on how to deal with any of these relationships, you will find that challenges arise. Um, and so um, the other. Um, the other myth around abusers is that they are mentally unwell or unstable. There are those who are, but I will submit to you today that most of these abusers are very sober, um, very, 
very people who are okay in their minds, you know. So th this myth of if someone abuses you and the first thing we tend to think is that maybe their mind is not working properly, let me tell you their mind is working properly. Um, and also um, the other the other myth um, around around abusers is that someone is either um, addicted to is, is either a drug addict or maybe it was alcohol. And um, you, you will find that this is just a myth because you, you will find someone who's very sober, someone who's never taken alcohol. Like in my case, I was dating someone who was born again, Holy Spirit filled, um, PA to the pastor, does not take alcohol, but I went through all these things. So the, the myth, are, it, it's actually just a myth around that the only people who abuse um, others in their relationships are maybe drug addicts in one way or the other. And it is just a myth. You will find people in church who are actually either abusing their wives or, or their husbands, because also we, we cannot also be ignorant to the fact that it is not a one gender issue. It is actually both genders. Um, and maybe I've, I've, I've just been reading um, around this topic and realizing, you know, for men, they may not be as vocal as we as we women are when it comes to some of these issues. But they're actually men who, who you will find are going through abuse in one way or the other, maybe in the way their wife or their, mm -hmm. the person they're dating. Ah, yeah, okay. them. Um, maybe maybe also um in, in ways such that um the man is actually not being allowed to live in their own home and is being put down in one way or the other and so um I'll, I'll say just to to not make this one sided that it is as much as it is the responsibility of of our men to to take care of us um i'm, I'm also just talking to the ladies and and telling especially the young ladies that um, you might think you might think you are championing for for women's rights and for equality, but actually in in the whole process you lose the point and the purpose of marriage and why God has given you that man as the leader and the priest in your house. Uh, because I've also had instances where um, you you hear men telling you, um, but she 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 talks to me anyhow, insults me, you know. Or maybe when your man is not in a position to provide for the family, you use that as a basis to actually not respect them. And that is actually a form of abuse. Because when you insult someone, like when you insult, when you insult the person they are, simply because they are not they, they, they are not able to provide or just be there in one way or the other, it is actually a form of mental abuse. And you know, for us as women, we will talk, we will make noise about it, maybe you will tell someone, but for the men, it actually starts eating them on the inside and it, it can create um, instability in the family. Um, and also, um, finally, on, on myths surrounding abuse, um, it is said that it is usually, it is, people say that, it is easy for them to leave. So if they don't leave, they're actually enjoying the abuse. So this is the other thing, you know, like you live and hear people like you're in a matatu and people are there talking, talking about this lady who's been beaten and someone says, I like in anapenda kuchapa kwa nini tokangi. And you see, these are some of the things that actually make it difficult for the person, um, for the victim to actually walk away. Because you see, you feel like you do not have a safe place to run to. And I'll, I'll just tell you this today, that I, 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 unless someone is, is, I don't know, mentally unstable, I do not think there's anyone who really enjoys being abused, you know, um, in, 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 in whatever form. Either someone harassing you at work, or either just, I don't think there's any person who really enjoys abuse. And so the reason I, I thought to share some of these myths is, just so that we can be careful. Um, when we come across someone who's gone through abuse, um, we, we be careful before we start judging them, before we start telling them they are in it for the money, they are in it uh, because they actually enjoy being beaten, they are in it because of one reason or the other. 
we actually be sensitive to first of all what they are going through and get to understand their situation because like i said in the previous episode for me the reason i stayed is i was praying you know i was praying and fasting for this person to change so th there's nothing really there's nothing else that really kept me there and also maybe just to finish this um, um around the meets is is the, the one the one major struggle i know young ladies and also maybe young men have in our generation, which I will talk about when I am talking about um, um, the, 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 the group of people who are in one way or the other vulnerable to such relationships, is um, I also want to say that we now live in a society where there's so much pressure when someone gets to a certain age and it, it starts from everywhere, you know, even from the parents. And you know, we see these memes when we when we get to December, we normally see these memes around Unaenda Christmas, na utaanza kulizo amzea ko api. And you know, we, we think we, we we make them jokes, but to some extent, if 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 the environment is not really controlled, it can actually um have an impact on someone. Because I've I've found people, I've I've met people tell me, Nancy, but if I walk away. I am 29, when, when will I meet, when will I meet someone? Or someone tells you something like, but I mean, Achanita Julia Ukombele, Kosababu, I'm already over, over uh, because I'm already over 30 years. And, 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 and my voice to this is, it, it's actually something I am telling the parents. Um, it's actually something I am telling the parents that, let us accept first of all that we live, we are living in different times. You know, during our parents' time, like uh, there's a time my mom, my mom was telling my sister, myself, by the time I was your age, I had given birth to the both of you. You know, and 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 and. And, and you see, um, she wasn't really saying it like in, in from, from a bad place, but you actually realize that there's a form of pressure that says that the society um, is, is putting on, on young people, especially those who are a certain age and they are not married. And these are some of the things that are leading people into getting into, into, into a marriage that you know this marriage already won't work. Um, for example, um, for example, I remember one of the things that I really had to struggle with, uh, that I, I also struggled with when walking out of that relationship is, I told myself, hmm, I am 26, I am headed to 30. By the time I meet someone, we start dating, I get to know them. And it is something I had to make peace with. And I, I just had to tell myself, Nancy, it doesn't matter, you will rather you would rather be you 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 would rather be like single and and not and not in a marriage that is not working and this is one of the things i've, I've really had people tell me you know that now what will i do and my message today is one especially to the parents we need parents need to accept that we are living in different times during our parents time people got married even as early as 21 but when you look at how society is right now, at 21, someone is in campus, you see. And at that age, even you as a parent, you want your child to go through school. But now what is happening is, um, after the child goes through school, uh, by, by, the time, by the time they are leaving campus, now it is the same parent putting pressure on them, unatulete am to lini. So um, that, 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 that is the other message I, I'm, I'm passing across to parents that let us, also, um, let us also know that even our children, it's not that they also don't get married, okay, unless they have told you they don't get married outrightly, but let us pray for them, encourage for them, encourage them and continue trusting God with them for their right spouse. Because you two do not want your child to get married and then they come back home um, miserable or you've been called um, like the, 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 there's this story I was, I, was, I, was, I was listening to it on YouTube. It was in the news some years back about this lady who says that um, the, the father was called in the middle of the night and, 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 and the, the, the ex-husband then called her father to tell her, I am going to kill your child. 
and the nun had to take a boda boda from Moranga to Nairobi just to come save her daughter. So um, I'm, I'm also submitting to parents today that um, let us also support our children, you know, because if I am 34 and you as my parents are already putting pressure on me, imagine how much pressure I will feel because I'm already feeling, God, what is happening? Where is my husband? Where is my wife? And then the only safe place I know, which is my parents, and they'll be like, oh, no, na meaka ina songa uko 34. So this, this is also the, the, the other thing I really want parents to look out for. And also in the same breath, um, um, I've, I've been reading a lot of articles and also um, just, 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 looking, just looking at, at research. And I hope I'm audible. I hope you, I hope you can, all of you can hear me. If you can, please let me know on the chat that you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, Nancy. You are very clear. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just proceeding on. The other, the other thing I, I thought um, we should speak about today is the vulnerable groups. Um, and, and one of these vulnerable groups I want to speak about is, is children who've grown up in, um, for lack of a better word, quote and quote, um, not complete family. Like either they grew up with, with a single parent um, or maybe they grew up from a broken home. Um, there's, there's a documentary I was watching on Netflix, um, actually not related. Okay, it, it was a sexual violence, sexual abuse uh, documentary about this, this, um, this, this billionaire um, in the States, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. And I watched that documentary like episode by episode and was very keen to just pick on the background of the girls because it's, you can go watch it, those of you who have Netflix. It's a documentary about he, how he abused underage girls for decades like for years and years without someone ever discovering. And the one common thing about all those girls that were abused, they had either come from broken homes, they were either orphans, or they had just come from dysfunctional homes. And it's, it's like in all the girls, I actually remember when I was watching it and my husband was asking me, but these girls are like 12. And then I told him like the, the, the most, the, the, common, the, the common thing, um, in, in all their stories is either they grew up with a single mom or either grandparents who didn't have time to be there for them. And also um, having grown up in the kind of environment that I've grown up in, um, I grew up in Bahati, those of you who know Bahati in Nairobi, um, I actually keep telling my hubby the way I can count the number of my classmates who we were together in class eight, those of us that actually completed high school. I think we, we, we are not, we, that, that number has not gotten, has not, that number cannot get to 10. So um, the other thing um, that, that I'm also um, asking parents to, to just be on the lookout for, if you are a single parent, it is important that you realize, especially if, if you're a single parent as a mother, it is important that you realize there are certain needs of a father that your child will not get from you. Like that is, that is given, you know, um, fine, these days we say we are the mother and the father, but God created us in a way such that if there is that gap, if, there, if, if there's the gap of a father, like the child will feel it. The same case, if a mother is not there, there will be that gap that the mother was not there. And so what happens, is especially for, 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 for such parents is you might find a parent is under pressure to raise up single children, and then they become teenagers and we all know how we were as teenagers um, and, and, and it is no chaos in the family, especially when it is girls and the mother. And you find that in the midst of all that, um, and I like what, what was said last week in the parenting summit about intentional parenting, the parent might get so lost in providing or get so lost in, in, in not wanting the, the, their girl children to bring uh, kids at that age and actually be blinded to all the other challenges that this child is going through as a teenager. And this child is going through as they are transitioning into adulthood. And especially for young ladies, you will find that making decisions on, 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 on dating, 
may not be necessarily the very best decision if there was that gap that was not filled properly. And especially if there is a disconnect between the relationship between the child and, and the one parent that is there, you will find that mostly, mostly um, like, uh, um, okay, I, I kept telling, I, I keep saying this even up to now. The one thing I, I used to pray for is I used to tell God that I want to get married to a man that is different from my dad because I didn't grow up with my dad. Um, my parents are separated. And it was always one thing after the other, one thing after the other, you know. And what, what also parents um, fail to know is that children see. And this is their thing I'm telling parents because um, I've, I've also had people telling me um, I've stayed in an abusive, since I shared my story, I've had people telling me I've stayed in an abusive relationship for four or five years because of my child. But truth is, if you're in an abusive relationship, chances are it is affecting you as a parent. Chances are um, you may want to be very intentional in parenting, but because your mind is not focused, um, you will lose some things, you know, and, and also especially where you do not have support. And also um, the other thing parents ignore is that you think your children do not see, but they actually see. Like I, I have one lady in a conversation who said, the way me, my dad is not a good man. I know he's my father and I've grown up with him, but he's not a good man. And you see, parents should know that, parents, that, that children see. You, you think you're hiding the pain and the abuse from your children, but they actually see. And, and the one thing um, I'll, I'll just want us to ask ourselves, because I'll also be a parent one day, what am I teaching my child? You've stayed in an abusive relationship because your children want to get food. What are you teaching your children? And also know that you are causing some form of instability to these children. Because a child will rather grow up in a stable and peaceful environment. It doesn't, if, if, if that stability is not in form of having a mother and a father, it is okay. So long as that child has some form of stability anyway, instead, instead of just staying and all these things are happening, like some very crazy things you will hear, um, a, 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 a father beating a child, um, beating the, the, the mother in front of children. And we think these things do not affect our children, but they actually do. And the one thing I have realized, um, I'll, I'll still go back to this because we are Christians and this is, a, is, this is a Christian forum. The only real healing that anyone can get is from God. Because truth is, um, as human beings, we've been brought up with certain needs. Like we all have the need, for example, of acceptance. We have the need for identity. We have the need for security and purpose. And um, in sociology, we say that the family is the basic so socialization unit. As in all the socialization that you will ever learn in this world, it starts at home. Because that is where you are born. Um, think of a child before they start going to school. All the things they have learned in those three years, they have learned from the mother, the father, um, and, and say from the house help and from the siblings who they found, that is if they were born and, and found other siblings. And so with the family being the basic socialization unit, I am submitting to us today that how that family starts is very important. And that is why I'm talking to young people and telling them, let us not be ignorant of how our marriages are starting. Let us not see red flags and still go on ahead and say, I will deal with them mukombele. When someone hits you once, twice, do not wait for five years from now. You will probably be dead or have lost um, your eye or your hearing from one year. Like I was, I was, I was listening to another story of, of a certain lady saying, she can't hear, like one of her ears lost her hearing from abuse in a marriage that she had seen so many signs. And so what I'm telling young people is, let us, let, let, let us not ignore how our marriages start. Let us be careful to start with God. Let us, be, let us be careful to start knowing that God is in this. Let us not just ignore the red flags and say we will deal with them who come better. Because remember, you're getting married to an adult someone who's lived 30 something, 29, 27, 20 something years. So if you think you will change an adult, no, no, that, that, that is an impossible problem you're putting on yourself because it is only God who can change them. And to the extent someone does not think they have a problem, 
my sister, my brother, you cannot help them in any way. Um, so that, 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 that is one of the groups of, of people that are, that are vulnerable. Um, and then the other group of people that are vulnerable is, um, let me give this example. Um, I, I don't know if she's in this forum. I, I, I have a mentee and I was having a conversation with her the other day and she was telling me that um, we were just having a conversation about parents um, in a family where she has both parents. And she was telling me, uh, sometimes she normally wants the dad to support her. And sometimes she normally wants the mom to support her. But she normally finds herself in a situation where once she goes to the mother or the father, they normally go discuss and then they will come back with one stand. And she was telling me, you see, I am a girl, my dad should support me. And I remember telling her, you've just told me how much your parents have a beautiful marriage and how much your parents recognize that them standing together um, is actually doing you, is, is actually giving you the best. And she thought about it and she told me, I'd never thought about this. You know, like I'd never thought that it is a good thing that I cannot go to, to my mom to get my way or go to my dad to get my way because either way they will go discuss and then they will make a decision um, in agreement, the two of them. And so the other thing I've seen is whenever whenever parents like start disagreeing um, like in, in how to bring up children or how to make uh, or how to, to or, or what direction to take for their family and you're doing it in front of your children, don't think your children cannot see. It will actually have an impact on them. And that is how you will end up losing the losing sight of when your child is going wrong. Because there's already division between the two of you. And so me as a child, I know if I go to my mom, I will have my way and I can exploit my dad when need be. So I know that I can go tell dad this, I can go tell mom this, and because they are not in agreement, I will have my way. So you as a parent, you look back and wonder where did we lose it? But it is actually just, it was just as simple as disagreeing in front of your children. And one thing I've realized is as children, um, uh, we, we are very manipulative. Like children can be very manipulative when they want, especially in teenagehood and that young adult life, you know, like in campus um, when, when, when you want this and, and you know that you can have your way with your mother or your father. At the end of the day, even if you go drinking, um, like I remember, <laughs> I remember that there's, there's someone from our campus who I, I found this very interesting. So she fell sick and she used to take alcohol, but the parents didn't know. So there's this time she was very, very sick and the dad came to take her to hospital. So when they got to hospital and the doctor said that they have to do a blood test, she said, by the way, Mimi ni mepona. And she, she was saying like, she really did her best to walk, you know, like she did her best to, to walk like someone who is okay, because she knew that blood test will reveal what? Will reveal that she's been taking alcohol. So um, but when you talk to children, and you know, like at this age, um, like between teenagehood and, and campus, I can tell you whatever thing that will happen will most likely happen during that age. And the most important thing for a parent who has a child in that age is actually be friends with them. You know, like be, like be a friend. Um, like show genuine concern and let 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 your child know my mom is a safe space. I, I, I can run to my mom. Um, I can run to my dad no matter what. And then we will deal with it after I have I have already gotten the safe environment that I need. Um, and then um, I think um, let me see what else we want to cover today. Um, yeah, so um, I, I think we've covered most of the points for today. And, and the one thing I'll just emphasize, um, especially if there's any young person here who is not married and they're looking forward to be married. The one thing I'll tell you is this, you know, the devil knows that, okay, and even for those of us who are already married like myself, you know, the, the, the family being the basic socialization unit and where everything starts. The devil knows very well that he does not have to disrupt the world, he will start there. Like the minute a family is messed up, 
generations are messed up. You know, like the minute someone walks into an abusive relationship and abuse that goes on for years and years, the child is affected and maybe there are three children in that family. So we are not talking about the generation of the parents and three other generations. And that is why it is very important that we guard our hearts. We guard our marriages. You know, it is very important that we make our families such a safe place. And there is this quote that I love that says, a happy family is but an earlier heaven. And you see, the devil knows this. He knows that a happy family is but an earlier heaven. And that's why he is, he is causing the young people in our generation to get into the wrong marriages. In two, three years, someone is divorced and broken. We will have to deal with them um, through the journey of healing in another two, three years. And then all those years are wasted. So what I am submitting to the young people right now, it is okay, you know, it, it, it is okay that you are 30 and you're not married. It is okay that you are 35. Just hold on to the promise that God has given you. You know, he is the initiator of marriage. You, you don't, you, you really do not need to walk yourself into pain um, in order to just hold, have the title that I am married which is every time I look back, it is something I know so well. Were it not for God, I could have walked into that trap. Like, were it not for God, I keep saying I could have been married when I was 27 and I could be divorced right now. And that's it. As in, I, th th that is the truth about it. That is the truth about abusive relationships. You know, like, do not give the enemy a chance to spoil the rest of your future simply because you want a title now, simply because you want a wedding now. Let us just hold on to the faith that God has given us. And the one thing I have seen very true in my life, that the minute we actually tell God that God now I am done over to you, I am done figuring it out, I am done doing it my own way. Now God, I leave everything to you. God indeed does come through. Be it a spouse, be it a job, be it whatever it is, because I repeat, the minute we allow ourselves to walk into the wrong marriages and relationships when we see, we are not only spoiling our generation, but even the generation of your children will be affected by what you will go through. So um, that's, 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 that's it for today. Um, I see there are a few questions here. Um, Um, before before I, I go I go to the questions, I think I'll hand it over to Reverend Waroy. Um, I don't know whether uh, Pasi you have anything to say. Um, not not really at this point. I think we can look at the questions, but maybe we okay. can start. Um, there could be someone who is in an abusive relationship, and mm -hmm. they are wondering, how do I live? Is it is it an is it a negotiating? Is it just walking away? Is, is it texting? Is it and after you leave, what is the practical next step? What do I do? I have left years, and here I am, lonely and alone, wondering if I've made the right decision. What do I do next? Okay. Um, so let me start with um, first of all, like I said last time, it is not easy to walk out of an abusive relationship. Like it is not at all easy. And especially because of the fact that you have most, most likely walked away so many times and come back. And I, I look at it this way. Um, I may be wrong or I may be right, but I look at it this way. You have to get to a place that unachoka. Like, let me just say in Swahili, umechoka, umechoka na kila kitu. You're tired of the abuse. You're tired of the misery. You're tired of the frustration you're tired of the tears, you're tired of the brokenness, as in you, you, you have to get to a place where you're just tired. And I can tell you for free, anyone who's still in an abusive relationship, whatever the excuse, be it prayer like myself, be it children, be it I need this on this, Hawajachoka. like they've not gotten to that place where you actually ask yourself, and by the way, what am I really doing with my life? And, 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 and that actually, whenever um, I encounter someone who's going through that, my first prayer is usually, dear Lord, I pray that you will get them to a place where I am a choker, as in they're just done. Because the manipulation around an abusive relationship 
is so difficult to live. I tell you, it is it is so difficult. Like I said for me last time, it had to take someone telling me, like, choose between you and you, you me and my your mom. And I was like, I know this one, this one. No. Like you have to get somewhere when you're tired. And also the other thing about, about living, which is a very important question. Um, the minute you leave. I can tell you, Pasi, mtu kama amechoka vizuri and anyone listening to me, like if you've gotten to that place where tu umechoka, unakuanga umechoka. And now, this is where I, I, I talked about the way, you, the, way, the way you start that journey from that day will also make a lot of difference in your life. Because if you do not have the right people to work with you, you will either end up in another very bad relationship, you will either end up either result to drugs or whatever it is because you are someone who is lost you are blind and and just walking and and you do not know where you're going because it is actually usually a state where you, you just don't know where where to start so like i said last time if, if 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 you're in an abusive relationship or if you've just left or if you're considering to leave the minute you leave talk to someone get a mentor um, get, get a friend, someone who can understand, because if you decide to do it alone, you will most likely end up in a much worse place than where you have left, or will end up uh, making a series, a series of several um, mistakes before you actually wake up and realize, okay, what happened? Like for myself, that is what happened. Like I had, I had a whole period of three months where I can't really tell you what I was doing with my life, but I was doing a lot of things, most of which I regret. But the minute I decided now, Nancy, I need help. Like I really need help. And I found people to work with me. And even you Pasi can attest, like by the time I, I, I met you, like I still had all these things that I had to deal with. You, you just, first of all, do not walk alone. Get someone to work with you because this is the person who will remind you that um, you, you left and so you need to not go back. This is the person who will pray with you. This is the person who will be there when you need to cry. This is the person, you know, so get a support system around you. And also the other thing I should mention is that it won't be as easy as, as that. Um, like I, I keep telling my husband, what normally happens is you normally walk out of the relationship. And then the first few weeks you think, ah, I am okay, I can deal with this. And then it's like one morning reality hits you and you get into a very dark place because it is not as simple as just walking out. It is much more difficult. It is now a process of healing. And like I said in my, in my Facebook post, you, you, you need to, to, to heal and forgive so many people starting with yourself. You know, you need to forgive yourself. Like if I can give an example with myself, I needed to forgive myself. I needed to forgive the abuser. I needed to forgive those around me who um, I, I, I felt they knew what was going on, but they turned a blind eye because they were benefiting from the abuser in one way or the other. I needed to forgive so many people. And for this, um, my, my, my answer to that question is, please, please, please do not walk alone. Talk to someone and talk to someone who you can trust. Because um, also in my situation, I talked to some people who I felt like it's like I exposed my nakedness to them. So also talk to people who you can trust, people who will actually work with you. Um, that is one, and I can see, I can see a question here on the chat that um, is it possible for survivors of abuse to become abusers too, especially emotionally? How does one deal with that? Yeah, okay, this is so true. Like I think I actually became one in a way. Because, um, like I mentioned, um, and I've been sharing in my Facebook stories, when I met my husband, I was going through so many things, and I was angry, you know, I was angry, like, I had so much anger, like, I used to get angry, and I don't care, I am angry, you know, and I could say some things that were hurtful, and it, it, also, really, um, it also really affected our relationship in a way and also my relationship with other people. And like I said, um, for me, it took, it took a, 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 an eight year friendship 
to actually an eight year friendship um, uh, coming to an end to actually realize I need to deal with this thing of feeling that I can just let people go because they did this to me and realize that I also need to extend grace as much as it has been extended to me, especially in my healing journey. So yeah, it is very possible. And one thing I tell people, um, like someone who's come out of an abusive relationship, it may not be like pap, but you really need to be self-aware. And over time, you will actually realize ways in which you have changed, negative ways in which you have changed. And now that begins your journey of actually thinking how, how can I be a better person and how can I heal and let go of these things? So yeah, it is, it, it, um, people who've gone through abuse need to be very careful about becoming abusers, maybe not physically, but especially emotionally and also especially in how you deal with people. So yeah, um, I, think, I think I've answered that question. Um, there's someone who was saying they can't hear, I hope they can now hear. Um, and there's someone who is asking, is it possible for someone to pretend to be good while in a relationship and become abusive in marriage? Okay, so um, from, from my experience, from um, all, most of what has been published around this topic, and also from when you listen to other people's stories, chances are, you saw a red flag somewhere. One day, one time, you saw a red flag. You just didn't think it was a red flag. And, I, and like I said last time, red flags are in small things. They're like in someone insulting the waiter. They're like in comments um, such as picking an example with myself. I remember after I graduated and when we were talking about work, a conversation could come up like, my wife cannot work in a job where I get to the house before her or comments such that by the time I get to the house, I always have to find ready cooked food. And you know, I was there wondering, honestly, let's be realistic. Unless someone is like a stay at home mom, what are the chances that someone will come home and find ready cooked food every day? What are the chances that you will leave work at five and there is traffic and maybe your husband gets home before you. And you see when someone tells you by the way, these are my deal breakers, me, I'll, I, I'll never get to the house before you, you need to do that. Uh, you will not be working past a certain time. And these are red flags. You might think, you might think they are just comments because one thing I've realized, I, 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 work, I work in a very high pressure environment and I can tell you for free, it came without saying, and, and, and it's, these are conversations we have with my husband, that every day I keep asking myself, okay, this is my schedule. I know I am too busy, but I need to create time for my family. So how will I go about it? Does it mean me waking up earlier or does it mean me working late? Like, because I am not a morning person, I can actually like work very late. And then I know the next morning, like I'll have time to be with my husband, you know. Okay, most of the times I'm sleeping, but I am there. So it, 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 it came without saying for me <laughs> that, that these things will actually come automatically. And one thing I thank God for is just having, is, is having gotten married to just the, 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 the man my husband is, because I've realized some of these things, someone may want to impose them on you, but God has created life in such a way that you will realize that as a lady, um, when you get married, there are things that you will automatically have to change. But now when it comes to someone telling you, you'll have to quit your job because I always have, find, I always have to find food ready. You might think that is not a red flag, but it is a red flag. You might think someone insulting people on the road when they are driving is not a red flag. So um, what I'm simply saying, Thomas, is I, 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 I honestly haven't come across an isolated situation. Um, and I'll give this example with, with my mentor's uh, permission. Um, she, she keeps telling me of a certain couple where um, they, knew the, the, they knew the couple. And then one year into the marriage, they are called, they, they, now this couple called them at around one and the man had really beaten up the girl. 
And so she tells me th the first question she asked her was, when did this start? And then the girl told her, when we were dating, there's a day he hit me. And then you know what us Christians do? Holy Spirit born again. Holy Spirit filled born again. We blame it on the devil. And she says, oh, he blamed it on the devil and I forgave him. But had she seen a red flag? She had. So chances are you will most likely see a red flag and ignore. Um, and in cases where in cases where someone just wakes up and changes, um, let me speak in the context of a believer. I will want to believe that this is someone who has either lost God in a way or I don't know something has happened because yeah, I, I know such things can happen. And what I'll tell someone in such a marriage is this person just needs to find their way back to God. And it is very unlikely that they will do that objectively when you're still there as a punching bag. Yeah, so um, that's that's it for those for those questions. I hope I hope I have answered them well, um, or to your satisfaction. And I don't know I don't know whether there's there's anyone else with a question at this point. Um, if there is none, um, hi, hi Nancy. Hi, hi Pastor. Yeah. There's a question we had received, and and it would be good to. Um, hear what your take is. And, and some of our audience should also feel free to make a contribution. Somebody was asking how, how can they stop psychological torture in marriage? Um, mm -hmm. I would think they may be talking about emotional uh, uh, abuse or such. Uh, I don't know what your take is. Um, and I know we have some other people who may also have something to say. We have Reverend David Kangede here. And um, I'm, I'm sure so they, they can put in something. Okay, um, Reverend, I, I, I let Reverend Kanyete to go first on that one. Yeah, Reverend Kanyete, if you're there, please. Um, how can someone stop um, psychological torture in marriage? <coughs> Uh, Reverend, are you there? Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Maybe before Reverend comes back, um, mm -hmm. before Reverend comes comes online, um, my take. Okay, I've only been married a few months, but um, with the little info I have around this topic is. But see, I'll go back to chances are that psychological didn't start in marriage. And I'm assuming what this person is talking about is insults, um, things like someone putting you down, um, negative comments, which are all forms of abuse. Because um, as I've been saying, um, physical abuse is usually like almost ukomusho after you've been put all the emotional, psychological abuse. And then now that's when physical abuse hits. So um, my, my mind would be just seek help, um, like co confide confide to someone who you trust, because truth is, if there if you, if you can't find safety in your spouse, if you can't find a shoulder to lean on in your spouse, where will you find it? So my advice to this person would be seek help, um, because also um, the other thing that this can do to you as a person is it can really bring down your self-esteem. Um, so I advise this person to confide either in a man of God that they trust or in a mentor couple that they trust um, because also the, the, the forms of psychological abuse may vary. And also you may, you, may, you may realize that maybe the abuser does not even know I am psychologically abusing my spouse. So I'll, I'll advise them to seek help um, in the context of marriage. But because I've been married a few months, I think someone, someone who's been, oh, Reverend is back. Um, let's, let's, let's listen to him. Reverend okay. Kangeza. Okay, sorry, sorry. I was having a bit of a problem with my internet, but I'm following you, Nancy. And I think this is very useful, uh, what you are sharing. 
uh, and also very relevant because I think uh, there are a lot of relationships that are uh, going through challenges like this. And uh, uh, from what I know is that uh, sometimes emotional uh, abuse is even much worse than uh, uh, sometimes even the physical abuse. And uh, uh, I have heard, for example, women who say, instead of you just keeping quiet and uh, uh, just uh, uh, shutting me out of your life and you come into the house, you don't talk, you leave the house, you don't talk to me, uh, you would rather hit me if I messed you up or if I did something that wasn't right, uh, instead of subjecting me to, to that kind of emotional abuse. So it can be very, very bad. Uh, but I think as you are suggesting, uh, I, I personally think maybe some of the things that we could try and do, uh, some of these things are better off with, uh, with the third parties. There are people who find it very difficult sometimes to even break silence uh, if there's an issue uh, facing you and your husband. And I think this is where uh, people, for example, who have had weddings, uh, this is where best couples will come in. Uh, these are people who can be mediators, people who can come and help you uh, discuss your issues uh, and probably just open up the, the discussions because uh, especially on the side of men. I know sometimes uh, if they are the ones on the wrong, just, uh, just opening up and sitting down to discuss the issues sometimes becomes a bit of a, of a challenge with them. So if there's a third party, uh, this could be somebody who is trusted by the family. It could be the family um, uh, pastor or it could be the best couple or very, very close friends uh, of, of this couple. Uh, I think they, they can help in terms of resolving some of these issues and just getting the spouses to speak to one another and helping each other to know that uh, uh, a lot of times uh, there will always be challenges because the enemy doesn't want to see us happy in our marriages. Uh, the enemy doesn't want to see us flourish. Uh, the enemy knows that when I mess up the, uh, the, the family, I mess up the church by extension and therefore the family becomes a very a very very uh easy uh weak point uh, if, the, if if for example we have a couples that are fighting or couples that are abusing each other so i think uh, speaking out these issues and uh i think also making an effort on the part of each one of us and uh, there are many ways you can use to to break silence i have seen some people communicate over over the phone and say i want us to discuss this issue this evening when you come um, so even if they were not uh, uh, ready for that, then, uh, well, they will be reminded when they get into the house, I mentioned there's something I wanted us to discuss. And just getting a way of uh, starting a, a dialogue, I, th I think that helps a lot. I also think, especially for Christians, I've also found a lot of value in uh, smaller fellowships, uh, leave alone the, the big fellowship in the church, but home fellowships are usually very, very good. And uh, what I have seen some, some, some sisters sometimes do is uh, invite a fellowship to their home and they know the man of the house will be there. <laughs> just, just invite a fellowship there, let people come, let people pray, uh, let people share the word and let people have a moment to speak to each other. And uh, if this this was a groomy person who probably wasn't speaking to you before the fellowship ends. Uh, as some discussion would have started, maybe you have opened up and started speaking, even if not to you, uh, to somebody else in the fellowship. And when those people leave, you can continue with the discussion and uh, get, get the person talking. So I think just breaking that monotony and inviting somebody to, uh, to your home, uh, that can help in terms of resolving uh, emotional abuse. But uh, as you say, it's very, very, uh, uh, I think I think uh, uh, traumatizing and also serious. And uh, now that we are talking, uh, in the course of the week, I have had somebody that we've uh, had to see in a hospital. Nobody knew that this person had a mental problem because all along we thought everything was working uh, because we we also have. Uh, this, I call it a, a gift among us uh, sometimes believers, which is not a gift of the Holy Spirit, but it's a gift of covering our issues and not letting em, anybody know. So the picture we put when we are out there is completely different from the picture we are when, when we are at home. So you could have somebody uh, like, like Nancy is saying here, who is going through a lot of difficulties, but you know, when a, when a marriage breaks, it's a shame. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's not something you can be proud of. 
So a lot of times before we get to that point uh, when Nancy has to walk out, you have tried everything that you could. And there are a lot of people who sit on issues, uh, but sometimes when it is not resolved, uh, it can end badly like the one I'm mentioning. This is somebody who has now ended up in hospital with the depression and um, incidentally, you got to see her in a mental hospital. The husband is also there pretending that uh, nothing was really wrong. But when you talk to both of them differently, you can realize that the reason this uh, lady is in hospital is because of the husband. But he is there trying to put up a, a different face in the in the eyes of uh, people coming to see the wife in the hospital. He's playing it well, and nobody would know that he is the cause of this. So I think those underlying issues, the issues that we keep under cover, they are the ones that are actually mess us up. So let me not take so much time, but I think those few uh, uh, ideas could they help in terms of resolving emotional abuse. And uh, just for me to oh. mention. Yeah. It happens also to men. It happens to men. There are a lot of men. Uh, I, I actually would say men are a wassail because they, they want to play the, 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 the masculine role. And sometimes they sit under uh, very serious emotional abuse from their spouses, but uh, people don't know. And um, uh, people say men will normally weep, but the tears uh, uh, drop inwards. Instead of dropping out, the tears will flow inwards. And that's why you find again a lot of them in uh, in depression, some hiding in other things. There are people who will, who will want to get to their homes very late after everyone else has slept uh, because they are basically not enjoying the relationship at home. So it's for both the parties uh, and something that we seriously need to pray about. And thank you, Reverend Waroy, again for a uh, forum like this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Kangeda. We really appreciate your wisdom. And um, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you've done it justice, and uh, we appreciate you for your time. Um, it's getting to 8.30, and I don't think, I don't see as if we have any other question. So I'll ask Nancy to make her um, concluding remarks. And then after that, I'll ask my friend, Pastor Thomas Mopashi from Zambia to make some comments and then uh, pray with us as we conclude. So Nancy, what are your concluding remarks? Mm -hmm. So, um, as, as, as before I go to my concluding remarks, I'll just say as a parent, some of the things um, to look out for in your child um, are uh, out emotional outbursts, you know, just out of nowhere. Um, an, an obedient, peaceful child is now throwing tantrums. Anger, um, you know, like all, all of a sudden your young adult is untouchable. Anxiety, um, dissociation. Um, also, sense of depression, depression as, as Reverend has mentioned, drug abuse, you know, um, a, a child who is now um, into alcohol and it is a problem. And um, the one thing I'll say about dissociation, um, it, it actually is not only a problem at a young age, even as an adult, like if you have a friend who's all of a sudden um, dissociating either from the family or from the group of friendship, before you dismiss them as, oh, they have become or they have an attitude, actually just try find out what they are going through because actually dissociation um, is the most common with people who are going through abuse in their relationships. Like it is usually almost like the first one because you, 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 don't, want, you don't want them to know. So what you do is stay away. So those are just some of some of the signs I'll say um, that at least parents and anyone else needs to look out for um, that all of a sudden you've been going for events and someone is no longer showing up or someone is just picking fights with everyone um, either in the group of friends or in the family. Um, also just to be a little bit keen um, to find out what they are going through. And finally, um, my, my prayer is one. My prayer is that um, the generation of, of young people that we have right now May, may find hope in God, may, may find the hope of marriage in God, because truth is there is nowhere else it is found. And even with all these challenges, we've been in a generation where marriage is perceived as either old school or it is not working, but marriages are working. Like marriages are actually working, but we have just been given so much of the negative and we have refused to go back to where marriage started, which is God. And the minute we leave where it started, 
there's no way we are going to see anything positive about it. So my prayer today is that among the people listening to us and um, every other young person out there who's trusting God for a beautiful marriage and for a marriage that will work in God, my prayer is that they may actually find that in God. And um, with that, I, I don't think there's anything else we need fear because if we have God, he's the one who ordered marriage, why are we really so scared? So those, those, are my, those are my closing remarks. And again, thank you, Reverend Bernard Waroy for this platform. Thank you to all of you um, that have um, listened, tuned in today and last time, and God bless you. Reverend. Um, Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nancy, for your time. And thank you very much for sharing these insights. I want to believe that um, um, there is someone who have risen to this and their lives will never be the same again. For me, three very important things. One is that um, never ignore the, 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 the red flags. Never ignore the small signs that you see. Number two, marriage is not a reformatory arena. Don't marry somebody with the hope that they will change once you marry if you see something wrong while you are in courtship or such, it will get magnified in marriage. It will never, many times, never go away. So don't marry with the hope that you'll change someone. And number three, don't walk alone. The moment you identify that I'm in a serious relationship with this person, don't walk alone. Get someone to walk with for accountability and at the same time, someone you can talk to, someone, someone who can come to your rescue. So thank you very much um, and, and let us be on the lookout. Let us continue praying and believing in God. Let us not put pressure on people um, because of their age or such. Let us support everybody in the situations that they are in. And thank you very much even for the maids. We look out for that. Um, Thomas, um, if you are there, um, let me see. Yes, I'm here. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes go ahead, say hi to us. Uh, Thomas Mupashi is a pastor in Zambia and a colleague of mine, a very good friend. He will say hi and then pray for us. Uh, thank you, Reverend Bernard. Uh, I'm so honored and I'm so humbled and highly blessed with uh, this program. And the Lord bless you for facilitating and hosting such a beautiful and impactful program. I also want to say thank you to Reverend David. Those were very powerful ways that were very inspirational. And also to our sister Nancy for sharing such important insights. It's not easy to come out on a forum like this and share your personal things and some of the things that you have gone through. It takes the grace of God. I want to say thank you so much. And just like she said, I want to repeat one of the things I've written here is when you see the signs, don't ignore them. I've been working with youths for the past 10 years. Uh, I think my coding is with youths. I told one of the youth that was in a very abusive relationship, I said, this relationship, you need to think twice. You need to quit it and don't go forward. And this youth said, with God, all things are possible. I said, no, 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 you are misquoting the scripture. And before long, she got married. The sad part is that three days later, they divorced. So it was a very bad experience. So some of these things, you better learn and not want to experience it yourself. So once more again, thank you so much. And shall we pray?